it's Black History Month, and while studying and remembering Black history is something that we should be doing all throughout the year, we love that February is a time where people can come together and really dedicate that extra time towards understanding, towards remembering, uplifting, and celebrating all of the Black leaders and people and struggle for Black liberation that has come before us. As many of us know, the struggle for socialism and the struggle for black liberation have a deeply intertwined history. So I wanted to start off the month by reading and studying some of the work of one of the most brilliant black Marxist-Leninist thinkers, Henry Winston. For those who don't know, Henry Winston was chairman of the Communist Party here in the United States from 1966 to 1986. Before he was elected chair in 1966, he was arrested and imprisoned under the Smith Act with lots of other communists in 1948. While he was in prison, he got sick and was denied treatment for his tumor, which left him permanently blind. And another interesting bit of history, during the time of their imprisonment, Fidel Castro called upon JFK to release them. There are so many more interesting parts of Henry Winston's life, like during the Great Depression and his time on the Unemployed Council, his time in the New York Young Communist League, and even his experiences as a soldier in World War II. But today I really wanted to share some of his political writing and theories. I'm currently reading his 1973 book, Strategy for a Black Agenda. Now, I'm about halfway through the book, but I'm really just going to talk about this first chapter, Black Liberation, Parallel but Different Strategies, because I think he really clearly outlines um, his thoughts about what's going on at the time and his reasons for writing the book. So when Winston says parallel but not identical, he's referring to the black liberation struggles that are happening in Africa as well as the black liberation struggles that are happening here in the United States. He acknowledges the similarities between the movements that were happening during the 60s and 70s, where in Africa there is a big wave of countries achieving formal political independence. And at the same time, in the United States, there's, of course, the civil rights movement happening, which was giving black people formal political and social rights that they hadn't previously had. But Winston, unlike some other black thinkers at the time, really wants to emphasize from a scientific socialist standpoint that although these struggles may have a lot of similarities, that they aren't exactly the same. And so that solving the problems in these different places is going to require different strategies and tactics and different ways of thinking and going about things. Winston directly addresses um, black thinkers like Marcus Garvey, George Padmore, Roy Ennis, and James Foreman. Now before I go any further, I just want to acknowledge that although um, Winston is kind of putting all of these thinkers in kind of the same realm for the sake of his political argument, uh, you know, they weren't all exactly aligned in their political thoughts or strategies either. But one thing that he points out with all of them is this trend towards neo-pan-Africanism. Winston isn't an anti-Pan-Africanist, but he differentiates the neo-Pan-Africanism of Marcus Garvey, of Stokely Carmichael, Roy Ennis, and some of these other thinkers from the Pan-Africanism of W.E.B. Du Bois, who some consider the father of Pan-Africanism. He says that neo-Pan-Africanists, quote, claim that the path of liberation is one that people with black skins must travel alone, separate from the masses of oppressed and exploited who are not black-skinned and without the powerful support of the many races and nationalities making up the socialist countries, and says that genuine pan-Africanism can only emerge from expanding internationalist solidarity, winning and consolidating self-determination by defeating capitalism and neocolonialism inside each African country. So to kind of directly point out what Winston is addressing here is the problems that he has with black separatism, with this kind of go-it-alone strategy that a lot of black thinkers were leaning towards at the time, probably due to the failure of white leftists and liberals to adequately address the problems of black people. And so, you know, to me it does make sense that there would be many black people and thinkers who felt that they had to go it alone, who felt that they had to um, create their own country or own space to be able to survive. And I think that Winston can understand that and definitely agrees that white workers, non-black workers need to take the work of anti-racism more seriously, 
need to more radically address the problems facing black people. But for Winston, the black separatist strategy is in ideological alignment with monopoly capitalism and with neocolonialism. This separation from other oppressed peoples around the world is something that capitalism relies on. Winston believes that these ideas and strategies of moving all the black people in the United States over into Africa or or people who call for there to be a separate black state within the United States, or ideas that suggest that all African countries are the same and that they want the same things, are part and parcel of bourgeois capitalist ideology. Winston wants black people in America and black people in Africa to be united against capitalism and against colonialism and he also wants black people throughout the world to be united internationally with other oppressed people throughout the world all fighting together against monopoly and imperialism now all of that was just my summary and my understanding of what winston wrote and i definitely missed and couldn't go over some of the finer details i am really interested in his understanding of imperialism and neocolonialism and monopoly capitalism and how those things kind of update themselves with the times to keep people oppressed but let me know what you guys think uh, i think that these kinds of theoretical discussions are super important and i think that we should be looking back on the debates that people were having in the past because we can still see that we're dealing with a lot of the same issues of neocolonialism and capitalism definitely today. But yeah, that's just a little bit of tidbit of history and um, I'm happy I got to share some of uh, Henry Winston's ideas today and I hope I did them justice. <laughs>